All right, thank you. We're going to call this meeting to order. Today's date is April 15th, 2024, and this is the Board of Public Works and Safety. Are there any additions to the agenda? Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Motion. Second. Motion made by Gerald, seconded by Adam. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, minutes. You should have your minutes from April the 1st. Are there any changes or corrections to those? I didn't see any. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Make a motion. Motion made by Adam. Is there a second? Second. Second by Gerald. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes stand approved. Comments of citizens. If there anything a citizens would like to make comments, please come up to the microphone, state your name and address for the minutes, please. Frank, we got one gentleman in front of you, then you'll be next. Do you what? No. No. Okay, I wrong before we on 12th Street. Uh, I had a, a, a small uh, incident happen the other day, and basically, uh, I don't know if I need to do a public apology to the police officers, um, but anyways, uh, I have this uh, guy that lives out directly behind me, but over a little bit, and he has this, I don't know, train light or something on the back of his house there that he has to use to let his dog out. So, I mean, it gets blinding, you know, when I go out of the back of the house, you know, and you gotta do this to get out safely because it's such a blind, you know, bright light. He lives lower than I do. His house is lower than mine. He's shining in on, you know, the, the upper uh, store of mine, the, the second floor of mine. So anyways, I thought I would get online and see if I could find an ordinance. And this is what I found, okay? I went on your site. That's something that I found. I, I got a couple of them. I don't know if anybody else wants one or anything. Here, there's two of them there. But anyways, I found that by accident, I guess. I, I found it by accident. But anyways, I, uh, he, he, the light was still on. So I had an officer come over, and the officer looked at it and said, well, I didn't know we had this ordinance, but I'll go talk to him about the light and everything like that, you know, so no problem. But uh, anyways, um, a couple days later, I was on uh, Facebook, and somebody, well, I think it was the uh, matter of fact, Hamilton Fire Department, and the auto uh, place over there, Hamilton Auto Automotive, and they were talking about these bright lights on the front of their building. And I, I was saying they need to be shielded, you know, because I was looking at that. But I thought, well, in case they want to know where did I get this information, I want to go back, research, try to find out where did I get this information exactly, so how they, you know, I could tell them how to find it. I could not find it. I could not find it. So I started to get panicked. So I called your office, I called Steve's office here, and I wasn't getting it. So I called the police, and he said he was going to help me out. And he, he uh, last night, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, he did call me back and everything. He says, I found it. He says, but, he says, it might have been in the wrong search bar, because there's a couple search bars. But he said, I found it, but it was in the wrong search bar. It's for Orange County, Ohio. Okay, so my public apology to the police station that you guys handled very well. And But he obviously, I don't think the police officer handed it to him because otherwise, I mean, he had his lights on the next day. So he has absolutely no respect for our ordinance if it was true. Now, with that being said, what does it take to implement something that simple? Well, I believe we have some type of an ordinance on this here, um, but I will have our city attorney look into that. Okay. Um, I didn't really see anything really on ours, when I, and, I, and I can research, this is no exaggeration, I researched probably almost two hours, almost in a panic, that I had lied to you guys. <laughs> I did not like the feeling. I did not like the feeling at all. But, you know, just to make it simple and everything like that, um, I did give him a piece of paper. I don't think he used it. I don't think the guy respected it if he did read it. And being, you know, a, an officer uh, that came over, I don't know what day it was or anything, but anyways. Do you know if they made contact with that guy? 
Yes. yes. Yeah. They did. Because I, I could see them in the backyard. Okay. Officers. There was a couple officers come over and they walked down and everything. But it, it's it's a very very bright light. And you know how things are changing. Okay. Now I mean I don't really agree with what you done down Main Street. It looked pretty. Don't get me wrong. It, it looked pretty. It's indirect lighting. That is an indirect lighting. It's not, you know, one of those, you know, you step out of the house, strip over, you know, I got I got a couple of dogs. They love their toys. <laughs> and I mean, they put them right there at the door. You know, when you walk out and everything, we have to be real careful, you know, on the steps and right there at the door. But, uh, you know, that's really all I have to say, but I would like to see what would it take to get that to go on. You know, I mean, the... Uh, Steve, did you have anything that you found yet on that regarding what he's referring to? I found something that I'll, I'll hand this out to the mayor to the good board. Uh, this is the only thing I can come up with. Pretty vague. Uh, hopefully, it's the same one Ron has. I, I, I have my coffee out. You know, I, I usually get up possibly early as I get up, usually about 1 a.m. And then uh, usually about the latest I am up. It's about 3 a.m. and I love my backyard. You know, I mean that, that's my sanctuary, really. You know, I mean, I cut down a tree. I can see the stars. I cut down a tree for a garden that I got, but I can see the stars. I can sit in the back. It's just so nice and quiet. There's no street lights or anything that's in the way. It's flat until they turn that light on. <laughs> I mean, it is. It is ridiculous. Is it a motion type light or do you no, know? No, he turns it on just go to the bathroom. You know, they let the dog out and everything. Yeah, you know, oh, a flashlight would be, you know, I see. appropriate and everything. But I mean, the the way things are happening right now, I drive a Ford, and the only thing I really do not like about the Ford and almost any truck anymore, when you're going down the road, it looks like you got six headlights coming at you. You know, it does. You know, and I mean that's ridiculous to have that kind of lighting. You know, to have that. You know, and it's not all bright either. I mean, that's just great with six headlights, and it looks like it's on bright. But okay. That's so, Ron, what I'll what I'll do is, um, City Attorney couldn't be here this evening, but okay. I will follow up with him. Well, I'm glad to see you here, Tori. Well, oh, thank you. I will follow up with um, the City Attorney this week, and um, hopefully by our next meeting in May, um, I'll have an have an answer for you. If nothing else, does Steve, do you have Ron's phone number that you can reach yeah. out? To? Okay. Steve may be able to reach out to you or the City Attorney directly um, to address your concern and look at see what ordinances that we have that may be able to help address this we had a similar situation a year ago out by the junior high where it was the the parking lot lights where the redemption churches were considerably bright i think one was strobing type um, flashing and uh, we was able to get that addressed too uh, so i i don't think this is going to be a challenge i just think we just got to find the right thing and make contact with the gentleman and let him know well, I know you do a lot of entertaining at your house, or I do believe you do a lot of entertaining at your house. No. If you're in the backyard or something like that, and it, 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 it looks like somebody's right there at the yeah. back fence, you know, sure. 30, 40 foot away with light, bright lights on it and everything. That's how, you know, it, it is rough. But sure. Thank but you very let much. Me get a, let me talk with our city attorney, and then we'll get you some answers. All right. Thank yeah, you, Ron. <laughs> and Frank, you had a concern. If you could come up to the microphone, state your name and address for the minutes. Steve, where'd you get this? Where did you get that? Off the internet? Mm -hmm. Off our. Off our Tell City's Yes. Okay. Yeah. It took a while to find it. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Frank Giovanni. I live in Tell City. Been here over 50 something years. And I live at 1859 9. And the concern I have, like the mayor, he told me to really consider you that actually uh, I'm working on a couple of projects out on the highway 237 and 37. And today I had another run around with in law. Uh, they won the war. I mean, won the battle, but ain't going to win the war, to put it that way. Like, uh, I talked to some young girl from Fisher came in, and I told her what's going on. I told her out on 237 and 37 intersection where the caution light is. You got a new subdivision going on. 
Yeah. 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 Then you got this one black kid with a bonnet set there, or whatever you want to call it. Then you make a rod, and not too far down the road, you have the, the hospital. And the only thing I asked for the doctor to do is put a rod in up there. And like you see on the side of the highway, like you got at the bridge. You're talking regular street lighting of some well, sort. Like you see at the bridge. Yeah, not a, not a traffic light, but a, no, a, a lit light. No, okay. Right out of caution light. Okay. And it's pitch dark there, and and, uh, and they did a study. No, we, you don't need it. You know, I'll go cut my view. You know that one message I got? Yeah, uh, you, you played it for me. Like I told that girl, I said, you tell those people in dog, they don't live down here. They don't know what we do down here. They don't. They don't know a damn thing what goes on down here. They don't live down here. They don't know it. I mean, like a, like you, like you tell me you eat something in your house. I say, Mary, you don't need that. You say, oh, you don't live in my house. Same thing in the hallway. They don't live down here. And they say, oh, we call this state. We need to have ten crashes here before we even do it. So we want 10 accidents at that intersection. We already had one or two fatalities, you yeah. know. Did, I know the one, the recording or the message that you played for me pertained to uh, Mozart and 237, yeah. but 37 and, uh, or, yeah, 37 and 237, um, I, I didn't hear anything on that. So do well, you- they kind of said we don't, did is it along the same lines that they have to do a study there? I know you said for them to do the study at Mozart, it was it cost them five thousand dollars, right? This one cost them five thousand. Yeah. Okay. And I talked to the girl about that. Yeah. And she said five thousand dollars. That's my tax money. I don't care. I pay road taxes. Everybody in here pay road taxes. And we pay state taxes. Sure. Okay, but they. I'm assuming they've had to do the same type of study at that intersection, if they have or haven't already, I, I don't know. Well, they did say it's on that radar, you know. Okay. But uh, I don't get to it. And I told them, I said, uh, it's busy dark out there. Um, I wish I was alone there, even though I'm talking about porn, because he's in Lewisburg County. You know, like, it's busy dark at the intersection at night time. And I talked about the Lozart Street in 237, which I consider it concerned South City because I told them Mozart Street and 237 is a South City exit, and everybody consider 237 like a bypass. In yeah. essence, yeah. And they travel that road to go through South City because the main thoroughfare and ends up right over here. And a lot of people. I see myself with people, detective cars, driving that road to Kentucky, and I consider that all the speed travel. You don't speed, Frank, do you? No, but okay. like I'm saying, if you speed on the road, I'm sure you're going to get bumped over. As know? you should. But uh, if you use that road to get to the bridge, or you'll have to go all the way through town, you know. So, Frank, what what's suggestions do you have for us, or or what can we do to help you in your quest for this? Or Well, I need help with this support. The more support I get, the more you put the, on the burden on the end of the pressure on them. And we've had to talk to the state, the state representatives about this. I'm trying to get hold of the state senator Mark Vesper. Uh, can't get a hold of him. I guess he can't make up his mind whether he's going to be a state senator or Congress, I guess. I don't know what his problem is, but I can't get on him. Uh, but, uh, uh, well, have you approached the county at all with this? Means, I mean, I know that I those are. I don't know who to talk to. I don't know where. I want, I've been trying to get a hold of Keith Hook on the county council, mm -hmm. but I haven't got a hold of anybody on the county commissioners. I kind of want to wait till we the primaries over to see what's going on after that. Okay. I mean, we'll we'll do what we can.
Frank, yeah, I know it's outside of city limits, but we'll, we'll do what yeah, we can to help you. I know it's outside of city limits, but uh, it does affect the both of the intersection. It does affect Chelsea. Anything uh, proven in Perry County, it, it helps everybody. Not just Perry County, it helps Chelsea. It helps everybody. It helps everybody. You know, and it what gets me, and a girl told me, she's going to last school, she's got something young, she's probably in college or something, but I mean, I didn't, wasn't disrespectful to her or not, but, uh, right. well, Frank, um, I'll wait maybe later this week, come by and, you know, or I can still reach out to NDOT and express your concerns to them that you, you know, you came to our meeting, but. I would also encourage you to approach the county commissioners and or the county council. They have meetings just like we do to the public where they have comments of citizens. And even before the election, it shouldn't matter, election one way or another, um, I would still approach them. I mean. Uh, I don't know when they have the next meeting. I don't know. If to, I don't have it on me, but I can get you that information. If you just call the office tomorrow, no, I'll get you in their meetings are. But it would benefit you to talk to them as well. But the As you point like I got across is that puzzles me. You gotta have ten accidents to do anything. I ain't talking about having lighting at uh, thirty in the end of thirty seven and Prince Free Road that goes into Perry Central with this pitch dark there. I talk about that Bullshaw Street accident. It's really pitch dark in the morning. We got school buses crossing there. And, uh, and late in the evening too, you know, when it got when it gets dark early, you know, you got school buses across there. School bus from across there, somebody go hit a school bus, and there you go. Well, Frank, I'll just get with me later this week, but I will go ahead and still, re you know, and I'll let you know when the commissioners and county council meetings are, so you can also attend their meetings. I know, like you said earlier, you'd like to have as many people as you could call and help you. And I think having um, them as well the would be moment, the beneficial. The street is more in your backyard than in the other one is because it's. Yeah. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go find Ron's neighbor's light and move it out there. That'll fix it. That'll solve it, Frank. His light's too bright out there. And if it's that bright, I'm sure it'll light at that intersection and the problem solved. I'm joking. I know, but, like but I said, it sounded good. Frank. Not only a caution, I want to put we are thinking it. Lighting up there too. Yeah. So that's what that's what I'll do, Frank, to help address your concern the best I can. But reach out to the county, like I said, also, and uh, that's that's all I can do for you tonight. I think. Okay, another thing, one other one, two thirty-seven, thirty-seven intersection mm -hmm. with a new subdivision going up. You got the hospital right next and two four from there, and I want to put a lighting on two thirty-seven now all the way past the hospital because it pays dark here too. And I'd have to find out who pays for the electricity on that because that's being a state highway. Does the county pay for it or no, does the it's state the pay state, for it? The state highway, state pays for it. Do they? Okay. Because anything on county road, county pays for it. Uh, okay. All right. You know more than I do. That's good. Huh? I said you know more than I do on it. That's good, right? Like I said, you know, when they came with that thing, uh, I think Betty Cash told me that she talked to Mark Ransford. It's been several months ago. So. Yeah. Get. Oh, did he? Well, maybe it's just in the no, works. Oh, okay. All right. So, you know, the world, you've got to have 10 accidents. Yeah. That's not our rule, but, yeah. They only had, what, one or two fatalities out there? Well, I don't I think, think we want to see any accidents. We want to be proactive, not reactive. But. Well, I mean, if, if it's saying one person died, that's one person that got hurt, but Sure. I don't think anybody would argue that. Back in 2006, I brought those lights here on 37, uh, 19th Street, I call it your line. How many lights are there? Putting it in and one out of Perry Central Turnoff. So they're back in 2006. Okay. So uh, I'm sure that proved that intersection a little bit because you still got a little blind spot here coming off the of 19th. Sure. Well, Frank, thank you for your time tonight. I don't. I want to be respectful of everybody's time here. We've got a few things we need to get through on our I agenda. Just want, I just want your support and the county and the people and 
Yeah. See, they don't know what goes on out here. We need to let them know. You don't live out here, you know. We do. Well, I can tell you, NDOT has been very good to tell city. In a, good. In a, yeah. You know, um, I'm, you know I'm going to talk about me. that later. <laughs> and no, they've really been very a very good partner for Tell City for our streetscape <laughs> projects, our sidewalk <laughs> projects, our our paving. They uh, millions of dollars they have given the city to, to do paving and improvements. So we're very blessed, and we have a very good yeah, working really relationship. Thank you for doing that road down the way I live. Yeah, I know. They, they, they need it for over. Well, I've been there going on 24 years, and I was hearing, so if I need at least, I don't know how long. <laughs> it's but, uh, called Frank Germano Way, right? Yeah, you ain't put the sign up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll be able to do that one, but. <laughs> now, that one's out of our control. Well, it's, it's in our control, but probably not within a, our scope of ideas that we could do. Oh, you know, I, I know. Well, thank you for your time, Frank. Uh, we'll see. Does anybody else have any comments of citizens? I don't want to take up everyone else's time either. Uh, I gotta go. Okay. Thank you for your all time. Well, you're welcome, Frank. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your service. Thank Thanks, you. Frank. Okay. Um, that concludes comments of citizens. It looks like so. Move on to department head reports. We'll start first with Chris Toothman, Tell City Wastewater. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, last couple of weeks, I've been collection system. I had a couple sinkholes, uh, collection and stormwater. Uh, the alley between uh, 16th and 17th on the 600 block, there was a sinkhole. Uh, had some bad joints, bad ground joints, so uh, that's been taken care of. Um, stormwater repair, we had three of those. Uh, at the end of Lafayette, 21st, there was a had that black corrugated plastic pipe that had a big slit in it, so it was causing sinkhole. Uh, got that taken care of. The Pizza Hut sinkhole was taken care of. That was that metal corrugated, and it was all rotted out. So we've got concrete on top of it. It's, it's when will that intersection open back up? Should we have? Yeah. Is it open today? Okay. It was open over the weekend. Yeah, we had yeah. all the barricades going on Friday. So Friday. Yeah. I swear it was there. I swear it was there this weekend, but I guess I'm now. No one out does that. And we just uh, finished up one today over by the post office and Humboldt. Oh, yeah. Thank you for digging up the street. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's sarcasm. It's all about the island. We'll make it better. Uh, Catch Basin has just been mandated over and over and over the years. So we put a manhole in uh, with a new uh, casting for a lid. So, uh, Drainage always has been a little strange in that alley where the yeah, how it, it's, it's a bumpy, uneven alley. It, it, it's always There's been a little odd. There. Yeah. There. Can you check, a, and I don't know if it's a sinkhole or if it's just where there's a water valve or what it is, but on Highway 66, almost out front of Arby's in the uh, laners on the east side, I guess, of the road you'd call it. Um, every time I swear I drive down, there's, this, there's a hole, probably about eight or 10 inches. Uh, and it's literally right where your tire hits every time. I don't, I don't remember it being there forever, but just, I'm thinking it's a water valve, but lid that keeps coming off for them all. They get cold all the time. Well, maybe that's where the lid's There's missing. Lid <laughs> it won't stay on. I swear, I hit that yeah, yeah, every had time. Had that calls that. It's kind of right between the uh, very, very clean arm. Yes. Yep. You have to the east, east side of the street and the closest to the center lane. It pops off real easy. And it's well, I'll, I'll say something to Brent in our next meeting. I'll say something to Brent in our next meeting because. I was just making. I was just worried it might be a sinkhole starting there, and nope. I thought, nope, yikes, that would be that'd be a bad yeah, one. Be, bad. be a bad spot for one. Yeah, okay. Got there. Uh, flood wall. Uh, we started pumping last Friday at Fulton. Started pumping at Lafayette and Washington on Sunday, the seventh. Uh, it did crest, but it went right back up again, and it's projected all the way out to Friday uh, this week too. So. Okay. Any questions for Chris? All right. Thank you. All right. Next up, Steve Goodson, Building and Zoning. No report. All right. Greg Glenny, um, Fire Chief. Second one he says. Okay. I, I won't ask any questions. Um, Stephen Parker, Parks and Rec. He's got something, I bet. Uh, 
involved down the pool. Checked the cameras, didn't see nothing, no body. Um, I'm still searching, going back. Um, April 7th, got a call from the police department. Um, the bathroom, kind of like pickleball court. The bathroom, both men and women, was vandalized. I got pictures. Sorry, I ran out of ink, so I only got one. So, where did, the, where did that water go? The twenty-seven thousand was that going to man, uh, the the overflow pit? Overflow pit the to pool. the sewer or to the pool? Into the pool, yeah. Huh? You mean the tap water? Mm -hmm. Your regular potable, drinkable water. Somebody got in there and turned a valve. Somebody on. had to get in there and turn a valve on to do that. Because mm -hmm. there's a big valve you have to turn to make it work. Into the pump house, they big old valve. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I believe it was. At least it invested you. They like broke into the pump house. Mm -hmm. We had a sure most thing. We had a high rate of He's got a suggestion for, for this one in a minute. I think we'll address it. Why we can't leave the bathroom? That's what we need. Hmm. On the floor. There you go. Bring a phone. Yeah. All right. Um, so as far as the the restrooms, he's going to talk about those next. Uh, that's the pictures he just passed out. Yeah, the bathrooms, April seventh at two a.m. at the same time. Uh, we got four individuals on camera. The police caught them. Um, I just learned of a possible name. Um, damaged both bathrooms. Men and women's. Um, the when you zoom in, it's the picture's not that great. Um, I'm working with Andy Hicks, met with him to set up a pole and a security light. Hopefully, that'll help. I um, also met with Doug from Astro Security to get an estimate on adding auto locks. I, Print it out because I ran out of ink. <coughs> That's $3,885 just for those two bathrooms down there. Something to think about. And that's all I have. So, on what Stephen's saying, these are, these are the bathrooms just near what they would call the horseshoe pits, the pickleball courts at the right. end mm -hmm. by the walking tennis trail. courts. Yeah, right after the walking trail. The, the camera did pick up the juveniles going into the restrooms. Um, the problem is the, the night vision with the cameras didn't, they kind of just didn't work well to get a good image of the juveniles. Um, what would help that is what he's saying is, Andy, if we could put a, a security light, and you go see Ron's guy over there and get that light, and put that out there, um, it would basically put it more in color. Because the way we was looking at it, and Steve and I both looked at it for probably an hour, we were reviewing stuff, uh, and weren't able to really you know, figure out who they were because of that. But it's more of a black and white version versus a color image. And I think if we have more of a color image, it wasn't as granulated because of the, the differences in the lights. The image would have been a lot clearer and you'd be able to tell real easy who yeah. the uh, juveniles were. Uh, he said he might have a name, so that's good news. So I hope the kids continue talking. So ask your friends, kids, if they did this and let's find out. <laughs> um, I think if we would, we would need to do a motion to allow another light to be put there because in essence it would be similar to what a street light would be in that area. And I don't recall that cost off the top of my head. Was it? It's not very much. Is it like four or five dollars a month? It ain't, it's not much. It's a yeah, small number. It's like 40 bucks a year. And, you know, I, I would love to do the locking thing, but $3,800 is a, it's a lot of money right now. 15%. Yeah. I just learned from what Brandon ordered out at Joe Schaefer. Yeah. And the good, th I mean, if we put the, the light in, at least it would, we wouldn't be able to lock them and prevent it, but maybe the camera footage would pick up anybody that's going in there and damaging them or tearing them up. Well, you already have money in his budget to, to put those locks in. Well, we, he might, yeah. And I haven't talked to Connie about the numbers yet. I didn't want to bother her last week. She was 
very busy. <laughs> she's very, she's really busy this week. She's on vacation, uh, so I'm not going to call her and bother her. She's out of the country, literally. Um, so I, we can devote to put at least a security light, which is That's the, cheapest, the route. cheapest route and would be a lot quicker fix uh, than waiting to have the locks put in and so forth. And we probably should have that anyways, because if some kids go down there and graffiti, we're still at the same problem with the, the image not being able to pick it up as well as we'd like with the color part. Um, luckily, these kids were smart the way they went, the way they exited the, everything. It's not like they really knew what they, the cameras and the angles, but it, it worked out in their favor. Make a motion to allow a new a security light. Okay. We have a motion made by Gerald, seconded by Adam. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Good. That solves that. Any other questions for Steve? Hang on, Ron. Any other questions for Steve related to the parks? Have you guys ever uh, reached out to other parks to see what, what they're doing? I mean, I've, especially in law enforcement, Phil can speak on. I feel like they're in this day age. I mean, if you come on my property in the middle of the night, dark or not, I'm going to be able to tell who you are. So, yeah. don't know if maybe we could look at spending more money on the cameras and maybe not on the locks or something. I talked to Doug about moving the camera closer. It's possible there's a, 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 a light bulb for the tennis courts. Yeah. Um, he's coming to meet me this week for Joe Schaefer Park. Um, and I also would like to possibly get a security light out there also for the same reason. I think light it up. Anywhere we need lights, just you know. I've tried to light it, but when we light Joe Schaefer Park, it's a little different. It's kind of more residential so, neighborhood. Yeah. We don't want to cause. Right. I guess there's a term light pollution. Yeah. This is, is a term I've heard used before. Well, I We'd was want to looking in, in front of the bathrooms between the shelter and the bathrooms. There might be a good spot to walk. Yeah. The just light from straight the down. Yeah. yeah, that would be best. I'm sure they would appreciate it. Yeah. Um, but that's one thing I'm going to talk to them about is moving the camera closer. Yeah. Okay. It's a good closed idea. door thing. Who controls those? Are they a timer? The, yeah. They, in essence, would be a timer. Like we have here at City Hall, our doors are scheduled to unlock at 8, lock at 430. And then they're scheduled to unlock again on Mondays when we have our meetings, and then they relock after we leave. They're, they're on a time schedule. And even with that time schedule, it can be over overwritten or ride or whatever you call it uh, with like our typical fobs that we use here at City Hall to get in so if they would need to get in there at, at midnight they could either use a real key of some sort or that fob would would unlock the door and there's two if you get locked inside there's two ways you can get out there's a push button at the top or on the side emergency you know yeah that's my understanding like a panic bar yeah in essence I call it a panic bar push bar Okay. But do some research on that. Let us know a little more. Um, maybe we can come out there and take a look at it. But obviously the light in general will solve a lot of issues moving forward in case vandals try to tear up something else outside of that building. We'll be able to have a better image. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ron, did you, your question? Yeah. Uh, have you ever considered voice activation, you know, instead of cameras all the time? But, uh, you can, I know you can't put a camera inside the bathroom. But if you have some kind of a voice activation, you got four kids in there, they're going to say names. You know what I'm saying? So if you've got two, three, four names along, you know, on a voice recorder, plus you got some uh, shadows, I guess, on the campus, you know, I don't know if you could put one one together and solve something, but uh, I, I don't even know. I, I have voice activation, but I put my campers in case somebody breaks into a camper. If they get in there and start talking names, then I'll have something. Sure. All right. Thank you for that suggestion. Um, Jim Holmes, Telsey Street Department. I don't really have any money. All right. Assistant Chief, Philip Slamian. Philip's got some. Uh, state police is going to take it. 
we can end up just actually sharing this CAD system with them instead of having to pick a phone, call them, taking the time to do all that while we're talking to other people and dealing with radio. Um, so it's called CAD capturing. So I want to look at uh, possibly getting that with our dispatch system. Um, I think it would be really big help for the EMS as much as we run to Spencer County. Um, we'll be able to share this with any agency that uses our um, software and pretty much everybody around them does. So that is one of the projects we're going to be working on the next uh, couple months. Uh, the other big thing we have going on is we've got uh, <coughs> 14 officers that are their ballistic vests are due this year. Uh, they're expiring. So that is another thing that we will be um, doing. We actually have a um, guy come in May the 1st to get them outfitted for it. Um, it will be fairly costly, but we apply for a grant every year. That pays 50% of it. So the game this year, I'll apply for that grant that hopefully we'll get and they'll pay for at least 50% of the cost. Great. That's really good to hear. That's really all I have. Just okay. Projects coming up. So. That's good. Good projects. Any questions for Philip? All right. Thank you, Philip. And that concludes the department head reports. Uh, so we'll move on to the wastewater adjustments. Um, I reviewed them. Chris just left. He reviewed them. We only had one that did not meet the criteria here, uh, but everybody else did uh, meet the criteria for those. So is there a motion to approve? If you motion to approve. Motion made by Gerald, seconded by Adam. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, we do not have any old business, so we'll move down to new business. And this was added today to it. Um, Vicki Luttring, um, she is the uh, county coordinator for this Perry County Special Olympics. And um, they're having an event on April the 27th from 8 to 2. Uh, it's a really great event. They've had it for a number of years here. Uh, you'll see. Uh, in the copy of the letter here, there's Dubois, Wark, Vandenberg, Orange, Harrison, Gibson, Pike, Posey, and Perry counties. Um, it's it's a great event. I went last year to it and I really enjoyed it. Uh, they're requesting some uh, the, the area to be blocked off there between Jefferson and Fulton Street there, uh, kind of where the parking lot is for the uh, I call it the band parking lot, but where they do a lot of their practices and stuff. But it's also a student. Uh, they're requesting that, and they've done this before in the past. You can see the map there. Anybody have any questions for this? It's pretty no, it's pretty standard every year. It is. And it's a nice event that it they put on. And I encourage everybody to attend if you can. It's, it's open to the public. I don't think there's a cost to no. get in. So, I mean. Hopefully Usually the police and uh, Legion of VFW, they have the parade. They take the flags around yep. and play. Yep. And they'll be usually the police do that, escort. Yep. Yeah, I've, I've done that. And now, this year they will be doing that triathlon. I don't know the timing on the eight to two so maybe they can get some word out to send those kids over to watch you know, yeah the, um, so it'll be a bit there will be a lot of shut down areas but the triathlon is not very long so no i think it's good i'm i'm making a motion to okay give them that access all right got a motion made by adam is there a second 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 by gerald any further discussion all those in favor stick up saying aye aye, aye. opposed okay Jim, will you just do you need a copy of this, Jim? Yeah, just so you can put it on your calendar. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, that concludes all the new business uh, under Mayor's report. I just have a few things I'd like to report on. Um, Tell City was very fortunate to receive the Community Crossings Award through NDOT, an uh, amount of nine hundred ninety-five thousand three hundred forty-nine dollars and forty-seven cents from round one of community crossings the most you can apply for is 1.5 million uh, so there's still a little over half million just barely that we can apply for still as long as we have our match for it it's a 25 percent match and uh, depending on how the funding looks we'll definitely probably go in again in in july is when round two will open up and they normally award that around november december uh, it's been both and uh, hopefully we can get the rest of it uh, the total project award with our match and theirs uh, is 1.3 million and this will be used for paving and sealing uh, you'll see a lot of sealing up in Berglund Hills area what sealing is is kind of like you would seal a driveway or a parking lot you keep it to uh, protect the integrity of the parking lot in this case the road and uh, you'll make it last a lot longer saving money um, big paving projects are several of them throughout the city but one of the one most notable one will be Tell Street from 12th to Adobe Lane by the library there uh, will get paved and uh, restriped 
as part of this grant. So normally, this is the first year we were actually able to put striping in the grant to, to do that. So a lot of residents have requested that street get paved and striped, so this does both of them. So we're really excited. Maybe you can fix that curb before they do that. I know. I, that's, I would, yes. It might think alike, right? Because you'd said something on that, and I ain't forgotten. So this kind of ties into some of that. Um, if anybody does ask, why are we not paving from Main to, to 12th Street there on Tell by Julie's Tell Street Cafe and, and so forth? Uh, that's going to be that's part of our uh, streetscape project that's going to come up in like 2028 it wouldn't make any sense to pave that then go back and dig it right back up in a few years so we're just going to try to patch that and keep that going along because if anybody has ever driven on that street or actually on the sidewalks luckily it's not really flooded but there is no curb out front of Julie's where it's been layered so many times and this will address all that and it address the paving and the crown in the street and the drain so any questions on community crossings um, we definitely want to thank NDOT for their well like I said wonderful partnership that we have with them Jim Holmes Janice Hackbarth and everyone that's helped us uh, obtain that grant I under B under uh, mayor's report I have to tell city strong we'll have their plant swap this Saturday from 10 to 12 here in City Hall Park should be a great event uh, make sure you come down and check their social media page tell city strong for more information on it uh, April the 14th through the 20th is National Public Safety Telecommunicator Week. Um, this is where we thank and observe uh, all of our dispatchers that, that they do in the service. And we've got a wonderful staff uh, working for us down at the police department. So if you see them, thank them. You could, they're always welcome to take down some snacks or, or so forth. They love those. I know Frank took down some, some donuts this morning to them, uh, and they really appreciate it. Uh, and last, I just want to recognize Maddie Holmes. I don't want to embarrass her here, but uh, this is her first time uh, attending a meeting and taking minutes in Connie's absence. So uh, we're glad to have you. Thank you. And uh, you have any questions or comments? or? Not yet. Not, Not yet? yet? All right. Well, that's all I have under Mayor's report. Is there anything else to come before the uh, Court of Works? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made by Gerald, seconded by Adam. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned.